Welcome to Gospel Preaching, a presentation of Gospel Time Ministries Incorporated. I'm Dave Rigg, coming your way from my home about six miles north of Albion, Illinois. My text for the message today comes from the book of Psalms, the 116th Psalm, and verses 3 through 15, New King James translation of the original Hebrew text. Verse 3, The pains of death surround me, and the pangs of Sheol laid hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And finally, verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Would you pause just a moment with me for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask now for your blessing on the reading of the Holy Word. I pray for your guidance through the Holy Spirit that I might deliver this message today in the way that you want it to be spoken. And I pray, Lord, that all who watch this might get from it what you have intended for each person to receive. And then it's this, all this I pray in the name of Jesus, and amen. Well, today I want to begin by telling you a story. It's about a lady whose name was Florence. Florence was born in the year of 1820 to a very wealthy couple. She grew up to be a lively and an attractive young woman. People believed that she would become a wonderful wife for some man someday. But at the age of 17, Florence heard the voice of God calling her to do his work. She became a devoted servant of the Lord. Over the course of her life, Florence claimed that God spoke to her four times, telling her what he wanted her to do. However, at the age of 53, Florence became convinced that she was going to die. She told her friends that her life was just hanging by a thread and it could snap at any time. We'll get more of that story a little bit later on. Let me ask you a very pointed question. Are you afraid to die? Does the thought of dying scare you? I know that there are a lot of people who try to avoid talking about death. Every day on the radio, we hear about people who have died. Every week in the newspaper, we read about people who have died. Sometimes we hear about someone's death, and it's a big shock to us because well, we didn't expect that person to die, not perhaps at this particular time in that person's life. But the question is, again, are you afraid to die, and are you ready for death? Even if it comes today, are you ready to die? Now, our Bible passage today in the book of Psalms says very clearly that God sees the death of one of his children as precious. Well, think about it this way. If God sees the death of one of his children as precious, well, shouldn't we too? 
Well, let's look today at some reasons why we should not, if we are born-again Christian, reasons why we should not fear death. Here's point number one. Death removes us from evil and takes us to a place of peace. That's point one. Death removes us from evil and takes us to a place of peace. In Isaiah chapter 57, verses 1 and 2, God's word says, The righteous perishes, and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. He shall enter into peace. So you see, Isaiah there very clearly says what I said in my point number one. Now, we all know that sometimes born-again Christians die from an accident. Sometimes they die young from diseases. And sometimes Christians, unfortunately, are murdered. And when these things happen, we are prone to see these things as tragedies. But I think we should think of it from a positive perspective. Because as my point says, and as Isaiah says, we no longer have to endure the evil things that happen in this world. Let me ask you this question. Do you want to have a lasting peace? Well, I've got to tell you, friends, it's never going to come here on this earth in this life. Peace has a way of escaping us when bad, evil things come into our lives. Well, let me ask you another question. Do you know right now anyone who is suffering? Maybe you are suffering. Christians who have suffered, my friends, are immediately re released from that suffering when they die. My dear wife, Pat. She battled cancer for seven years, seven years, and many times going through those chemo and radiation treatments and also the other discomforts that came in fighting that deadly cancer made her a very suffering person. Sometimes she got so tired she could barely get out of bed. Well, friends, when a person who has suffering in his or her life dies, they are carried away by the angels, the Bible says, and they are taken to a place of comfort. Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever wanted to see an angel? Well, you will when you die. You see, death is going away to paradise. In Luke chapter 23, verse 43, Jesus says to one of the men there on the cross, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. You know, people spend lots of money to go to beautiful places, especially at vacation time. Some people, they go to Hawaii or to some of those other tropical islands where it's always warm and the skies are blue and a beautiful ocean. People spend a lot of money going to places like that. Well, friends, I'm going to go to a beautiful place, and it's not going to cost me any money. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. So Paul here views his impending death as, as he says, a departure. Now, the Greek word in the original text of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, translated into our English Bibles as departure, means a losing from moorings before setting sail. So, friends, the old ship of life that I'm sailing in now is someday going to sail away to beautiful heaven. 
Listen to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Now there, Peter uses the Greek word exodos, which is translated into our English Bibles as decease. And it's, it's a Greek word that actually means to exit. In other words, after I finish here, I'm going to exit out of my living room into a, another place, into another place in my house. Now, that same Greek word is used to describe the exodus of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage. Friends, someday I'm going to exit this sinful world. Well, let's get back to our story of Florence. Remember I told you a few minutes ago that Florence had become convinced that she was going to die, that her life was just hanging by a thread. And Florence was scared. Now, to avoid dying at the age of 53, Florence decided she was going to go to bed and stay there. Well, doctors came in and they examined Florence, but they couldn't find a single thing wrong with her. But still convinced that the doctors were wrong and that she was going to die in any moment, Florence refused to get out of that bed. More of that story later on, but let's move on to point number two. Point number two, death is a gain, something far better than living. Get that? Death is a gain, something far better than living. In Philippians chapter 1, verses 21, 22, and 23, God's Word says, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Now, this was just another way of Paul telling us how he looked at death. You see, friends, death allows us to finally be with Jesus. It sends us home to be with the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6, 7, and 8. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now, friends, this is why Paul considers death to be a gain, not a loss. Death means our bodies are asleep in Jesus, yet our souls are living with him. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Now this is talking about the resurrection of our bodies from the grave after we have died, okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. So, those who have died in Christ are said to be asleep in Jesus. Now, that's talking about their bodies, okay? Now, does this phrase, sleep in Jesus, mean that we are just asleep? Like when you go to bed at night? No, I know there are some that teach that, but verse 10 says those who sleep in Jesus still live together with him. In other words, their souls live with Jesus in heaven, okay? And that says we are being aware of where we are 
and what is going on there. Yes, our bodies are asleep after death, perhaps in the ground or whatever is done with our bodies after death, but at death, we, our souls separate from our bodies and ascend to be with the Lord in heaven, and we're awake there. We are fully aware of what's going on there. Well, back to our story of Lawrence today. Remember I said that Florence believed very firmly that she was going to die at any moment. And she was so afraid of death that she decided to go to bed and stay there to avoid dying. Now, it, it wasn't just that she went to bed. Florence refused to make any public appearances. She would not leave her bedroom. She never attended any public function. She would only allow, get this, one person at a time to come see her in her bedroom, and then they had to have an appointment to do that. I think you can agree with me that Florence had become a hypochondriac who was afraid of death. And you know what? Florence was right. Yes, she did die. We'll get the conclusion of that story here in a moment, but let's move on to my final point, point three. Death is a rest from our labors. Death is a rest from our labors. Revelation 14, verses 12 and 13. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you ever get tired of working? Boy, I sure do. I don't like mowing. And after I get done mowing my yard, it takes about two hours, I am beat. And all I can do, or all I want to do after that, is go find my easy chair and rest. Well, first to take a bath, okay? And then I hit the easy chair. You see, we all, no matter how old or how young you might be, we, we eventually, our bodies get tired, and we need to rest. I like to rest, and I suspect all of you do too. I like to take it easy, as I said, in my easy chair right over there. But you know what? <laughs> I can't stay there as much as I'd like to. Eventually, I have to get up and get busy and do something else. I have to get up and, as I said, do work in my yard or do some cleaning around my house here, do some laundry. And some of you know that not only that, but I do go out and do a lot of ball games at high school level, and I put those games on the radio and on the internet, and boy, that keeps me busy. And after I get through doing a game, especially if I have to do several games, like uh, one time I went uh, up to uh, Casey and another time to uh, Shelbyville and did five volleyball games back to back. Well, you can imagine, I was dead beat after I finished those games, and even then I had still had that drive all the way home. So I get very tired when I do those things. And one of the blessings promised to those who patiently keep the commandments of God and the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is rest, rest from all of our labors and our work. Well, let's find out how the story of Florence ends. Florence didn't want to die. She went to bed and stayed in bed. How long did she stay in bed? Well, 37 years. I wonder if she ever got bed sores. Yeah, she, she was so afraid she was going to die, she went to bed because she believed she was going to die at any moment. So she went to bed, but death didn't come until 37 years later. Florence died at the age, are you ready, of 90. That's right, Florence was 90 when she died. Now, some of you might be wondering, who was this lady named Florence? Well, 
Let me first tell you, she had distinguished herself by helping the wounded and dying soldiers in the Crimean War of 1854. And she was an incredible nurse. Her name, maybe some of you guessed it by now, Florence Nightingale. That's right. Florence Nightingale's lasting contribution has been her role in founding the modern-day nursing profession. She set an example of compassion, of commitment to patient care, and diligent and thoughtful hospital administration. Yes, Florence made a lasting contribution to this world. Those of you who are nurses, like my wife was, you know the story of Florence Nightingale very well. And those of you who are not nurses, you probably know it as well. And yet, friends, we have to be truthful about this. The full story of Florence Nightingale's life is a sad story. She lived in isolation for a total of 37 years because she was afraid to die. In sp instead of spending her later years enjoying this life, she lived in fear of life to come. And friends, this should convince the faithful Christian that death, first of all, is not to be denied or feared. Second, it is something precious. And third, we can even be anxious for the blessings that it brings. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. And finally, verse 15, And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I am convinced there are many people Many Christian people, even some born-again Christian people who are living in the bondage of fear of death. So again, in closing, I ask you this question. Are you afraid to die? Or have you been freed from the fear of death? I've got to admit to you, as a boy, a young boy, and even in my teenage years, and even up into my young adult years, I was afraid to die, and the, 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 the mere thought of death just scared the bejeebies out of me. But when I was born again in 1988, that all went away, and it became possible for me then to do something that I never thought I would ever be able to do, and that is work in a funeral home. Now, friends, I'm not afraid to die, and the thought of death doesn't scare me at all. And friends, you can have that same thought, you can have that same attitude towards death. All you have to do is put your faith and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's all you got to do. And the fear of death can be wiped away. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for the opportunity to come each week here on Gospel Preaching, Facebook, and on YouTube with these messages you put upon my heart each week. I pray, Lord, now that as it goes out, that you will use it to touch the lives of the people who watch. And Lord, that you will, if it's your will, give me the strength and the opportunity to come again next week with another message from your word. I pray this in Jesus' name, and amen. Well, thank you again for watching Gospel Preaching today. Hope you're telling other people about this. Maybe you know someone who could benefit from this message today, or perhaps some of the other messages that I have preached here each week on Gospel Preaching. All of them can be found there on YouTube or on Facebook Gospel Preaching. So maybe you can uh, uh, suggest to someone who needs to hear a particular message that I have delivered today or in the past, and it will help them too. So just tell them how they can find it. So hopefully I'll be back next week. In the meantime, 
My prayer is that God will richly bless you.